let's call the meeting to order at 6.01. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, is there any public comment? <clears throat> okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna make one, um, one announcement, two announcements. One is that the public hearing will, for our budget, for this CV Fiber 2024 budget, will begin at 610. So wherever we are in, in, in our process here, I'll, I'll stop at 610 to officially open that public hearing for comment. And we'll see how, how long that stays open, but it'll be open for at least the 10 minutes that I have described here. That's one. The other thing I would like to do, and I, I did this for the at the executive committee meeting as well, and it's uh, it's it's my fault for not putting it on the agenda. I just want to make a, a safety announcement, please. And the safety announcement refers to our field workers, and I I ask that our our board members. Um, to if, if you if you if you see folks working in the field to just allow them to continue their work and and not to uh, engage with them in in any particular way uh, if if folks want to go out and see field work that can be arranged very welcome to do that and that's something that we can do uh, on relatively short notice so that would that would and that would be a wonderful thing. But I, I, I do ask, and I've, I've, I've been asked by our construction management crew to please ask that we leave the, the, the workers in the field alone, let them do the work. And it's, it's really for matters of safety primarily, but also they don't necessarily have information that, would, that you may be asking for or looking for, and it kind of puts them on the spot to answer questions that they're not necessarily uh, geared up to answer or, or would expect to even have the answers. So I just want to make this as a, uh, as, a, as a safety announcement. I apologize for not putting it on the agenda, uh, but it, it's something that's important and it, it was brought to, uh, brought to our attention last week by our uh, construction management folks, our field management folks. A any comment on that before we move forward? Thank you. I, I, I appreciate hearing appreciate you hearing me out on that. Uh, let's jump to the prior meeting minutes, and like I said, we'll come back to opening the public hearing. Um, Jeremy, can you uh, take that aspect, please? Uh, motion to approve the minutes for the meeting of October tenth, twenty twenty three, with minor corrections by Alan Gilbert. Second. Seconded by Siobhan. And I don't even need to edit the yesterday or the last motion, <laughs> except the date. <laughs> any discussion on this issue? Hearing none, are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Again, hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you, Jeremy, for, for moving that forward. Um, Lori Beth had mentioned that she might be late also. Lori Beth, are you, are you here? I don't see your name on the list. Okay, so Laura, I don't think Lori Beth is with us yet, so we can, we can postpone the uh, treasurer's report as well. Moving right along. <laughs> Janiel, uh, would you be so kind, please, as to um, bring us through our construction update and all the way down through the marketing presentation and update, please? Yes, absolutely. I'm going to call on Lucas and Olivia where appropriate. Um, to start with the construction update and outlook, we have numbers as of today. We have 159 miles of fiber and strand built. Um, and we have uh, 1,223 service points. Last but not least, 
Oh, I'm, I'm already about to go into operations instead of doing that. Um, um, do you want to add anything to construction update, Lucas? Uh, I don't know if it falls under construction or operations, but we do have the uh, the conduit and power ready for the Rumney School OLT site, which uh, Washington Electric has said would be end of this week or beginning of next. So that's good progress there, none too late. Um, and we uh, are still waiting on one Washington Electric make ready issue that is going to... Uh, is currently holding us up a little bit from getting the light to the cabinet, um, but we are in touch with them about that. And I am thinking it will be resolved in the near future and shouldn't hold anything up. Yeah, and we're we're constructing in CLO3 um, now as well, because we did get the green light from Hardwick in some locations. So construction is moving along at a pace of about 2.6 miles per week. Um, we're, we actually added some crews today. It looks like we, we have a total of seven um, going on eight crews. And Eustace has hired some contractors as well to try to increase um, to increase the rate of construction. Even though we're going into the holiday season, into the snowy season, construction still seems to be going at the pace it has been going at. Um, so that's great news. Um, Moving on to materials and warehousing, I think what you had mentioned, Lucas, kind of falls into materials and warehousing, but anticipating that we're going to renew our warehousing contract, that'll be on next month's board agenda. Um, we're just wrapping up some final changes with warehousing. Um, we are uh, winterizing at the warehouse. We're creating safety protocols at the warehouse. We installed a safety light at the warehouse um, and are working on um, getting better cell phone coverage in there. Lucas uh, is going to help us <laughs> um, do Wi-Fi extenders <laughs> at the warehouse. Um, Lucas, you want to add anything to materials and warehousing? Uh, no, just that we have one relatively small order that we'll be placing ASAP, and that will hopefully cover us for, I'd like to say the foreseeable future, but you never do know with, with consumables, but uh, it should put us in a good spot to get into CLO3. So that's my... <clears throat> My main goal of that right now. Lucas, could you please make mention of the uh, unfortunate fire at RK Miles? Yeah, so uh, I believe it was two weeks ago now, RK Miles, which is um, neighboring Boxtown, which which has our outside fiber reels and, and strand and vaults and material Ooh. like that. Um, I'm sure you, many of you saw that went majorly up in flames. And um, we were in touch uh, both Janelle and myself with Justin with um, Straight Line Broadband slash Wild Blue Yonder uh, that night to ensure that we're all all had eyes on how that was approaching our uh, our material and luckily for us anyway that it, it it did not get near it we were not affected um, RK Miles not so lucky um, but uh, it was contained so. Um, we dodged a bullet there and, uh, you know, now with the flood and that we've, we've dodged a couple of bullets. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, really looking out so far with, um, with materials and warehousing and these natural disasters that, that keep happening around us. Thanks. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, Lucas. Uh, Janil, allow me to jump in for one second because it is 610. And I would like to open up the CV Fiber 2024 uh, budget public hearing. Is there anyone here with us uh, who would like to make a comment on the CV Fiber 2024 budget? I don't hear any. Uh, we we will continue going through our. Um, agenda, but we'll we'll go back to this because this will stay open um, really for the duration of the meeting. I, it, it would be silly for someone to come later on and have us not uh, take any comments. So, Jeremy, your hand is up. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say that I can keep an eye on the attendance and if people come in who are um, 
who seem to be members of the public and you know we can ask them if they would like to contribute uh, i also wanted to say thanks to everyone who worked on this it's a ton of work and it's very much appreciated yeah thank you jeremy i i, I appreciate you looking out in that way because that's uh I, I just won't be able to uh, to multitask in that way. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm barely doing what I'm doing. So, uh, OK, Janelle, I'm going to hand that. Oh, wait, Henry has his hand up. Go ahead, Henry, please. I think uh, that comment needs to follow with a special thanks to Ray. Absolutely. Much indebted to Ray's work. Thank you, Henry. Uh, additional comment, or I'm going to hand it back off to Janelle. Go ahead, please, Janelle. I'll go back on mute. To continue, we had stopped at materials and warehousing. So next, we'd like to talk about operations update and outlook. Um, we have 33 live customers and eight in the queue to be connected. We're averaging seven, seven new hookups uh, a week in CLO one. That is our only open distribution area at the moment. And I will let Lucas and his sidekick take it from there. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, no, like you said, um, Waitfield continues to uh, schedule installs. Working through some, you know, early hiccups, um, but Waitsfield really seems to be on top of everything. So um, very confident that we, we won't have those issues, um, at least going forward. Um, they have a drop trailer at the uh, the Callis Town Hall, so they don't have to bring materials back and forth. They're not using our warehouse. Um, so they're on top of, of, of all that. They have everything needed so they can just be central, local, um, and get it done as, as best as possible. Um, you know, being the way we, we opened up the first DA, not being completely done has caused a few, um, a few issues, but they're doing their very best to work through, through everything. And I'm assisting along with NRTC, so um nothing too major you know one or two um but all in all it it's just going really well yeah so we've had questions about um uh siobhan you have your hand up um yeah i was just wondering can you tell us how many of which kinds of customers they are like how many residential first tier second tier yeah um yeah, Olivia, do you have that handy? I know we can see that, but I think you might be the pro in, in finding those numbers. Um, it's not um, a huge deal if it's a pain. Not handy. Uh, the only reason why I would refer back to Waitsfield on that is because some people have been changing their plans, meaning upgrading, and that usually is most up-to-date information on the Waitsfield end, but we can certainly get that for you, Siobhan. But do allow me to comment to Siob to Siobhan's question, and, and that is that folks have been taking higher tiers um, more than we had anticipated. It, you know, in our projections, we had a mix of such such a percentage at our first tier and then the next tier and the next year, different diminishing percentages as we moved up in the level of service, and we're finding that people are asking for higher higher levels of service than we had originally uh, anticipated. Linda, I see that your hand is up. Go ahead. Yes, we have 17 uh, customers at the 100 megabytes per second level, seven at uh, 500, five at the residential one gig, uh, and two at the business one gig. Thank you, Linda. Cool, oh, thanks. Janiel, back to you, I think. Sure. Um, so to continue on operations updated outlook, um, part of this is consistent messaging to be on the same page. Our goal is to be on the same page with our operator 
to be conducting um, our our business in the transparent and um, and trustworthy manner that we build our business on. And and part of that is um, messaging, marketing. So this is a perfect uh, segue into the next portion of our agenda, which is marketing um, presentation, update, and outlook with Olivia. Um, if, if Olivia, if you'd like to add anything to the operations update um, before going into anything else that you have planned for the marketing update uh, presentation and outlook, then perhaps you could mention it here. Um, Olivia, give me one second before you start, please. Jeremy, I see your hand is up. Do we have someone here that is interested in the making a comment on the budget? No, but, uh, well, perhaps. Uh, Lori Beth is here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. We'll, we'll put Lori Beth after, after the uh, the marketing <laughs> presentation and, and outlook. Welcome, Lori Beth. Sorry, Olivia, for stomping on you there, but <laughs> no, no worries okay. at all. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, most recently, um, we were in Middlesex on Sunday. Um, we had a table right in between the Redhead and uh, the local. Uh, Sybil helped arrange that for us. Uh, she was so kind to volunteer her time as well. Um, it was a really great opportunity because we met with a lot of folks who actually pre-registered and said, we didn't know that you still existed. So that was very nice. Um, for us to validate that. Um, but we, I also went around to all of the businesses nearby and left uh, postcards and town update door hangers. So we have new town update pages on our website and all of the businesses were more than happy to uh, hold our marketing material and distribute that accordingly because residents in Middlesex were very interested in terms of when we would be there. And so we were able to provide, you know, more brushstroke timelines and give a status update as they drop by for their coffee and their morning pastry. So it was a really good event on the brand awareness side. Um, in terms of CLO1, noteworthy to mention that we are utilizing CrowdFiber's email functionality. Uh, so for all the folks who pre-registered in CLO1 and did not sign up for their internet package, we sent out two rounds of follow-up emails and we had a 49% conversion rate in CLO1, which is fantastic. Um, tough to tell. What, what does that mean, conversion rate? I'm sorry, Olivia, yep. what do you mean yep. by that? Meaning out of uh, out of all the folks that pre-registered for CLO1, we needed to send a follow-up email for them to actually go and select their email package. So we, we, can, we changed people over from just pre-registered folks to actual paying customers. That was a 49% rate, which is fantastic. Uh, whether that will happen in other DAs is tough to tell, but we will be monitoring these metrics moving forward. So once we're ready for CLL2, the same tactic will be applied. Uh, a couple of other things that are noteworthy to mention. Uh, we are utilizing Front Porch Forum in several different ways. For so first and foremost, we decided to do a November giveaway. So we have a new survey that is out. Uh, it is valid up until November 30th. We are giving away a fire stick, uh, which was donated to us, um, but we've asked the public to respond to one question in 250 words or less, tell us how high-speed internet will change your life. And to date, we've received over 20 responses, which is really nice. So it adds, again, some color and character in terms of you know, why, why our work is really you know, making an impact. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to mention was that on the messaging front, uh, we've been receiving an influx of website inquiries from porch forum messages, social media posts. Uh, we are answering every single one that is coming in, either myself or Lucas. Uh, we are tag teaming on those. So if there is something out there, uh, as you've been doing so, please feel free to forward them. We are very comfortable in terms of the language, in terms of the most up-to-date up to date, uh, timelines. And I think that, again, we need to become transparent and accountable. And I think that one of the ways that we will be doing that moving forward is issuing an end of year update and sending that out uh, via email and posting that on all of our social media accounts as well. So a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Are there any questions?
Thanks for your work. Very welcome. Tom I, Fisher I, I put a... something in the chat. Tom Fisher said on the marketing front on our web page, there's um, something on the splash page that shows um, signing up for service instead of sites availability. Um, so it's something just to look into, Olivia, if you can see Tom Fisher's note in the chat. I will look into that and I'll respond accordingly. I'll follow up with you, Tom, via email, if that's all right with you. Olivia, were you planning on walking through the presentation as you did with the executive committee? I do. Um, I oh, would ask okay. you that, Danielle, um, maybe put a little bit of background to the presentation, and I'd be happy to take everyone through that. Yeah, so we developed this presentation, um, mostly Olivia uh, created this presentation with input from others from the team. And the purpose of this was to um, present it to potential financial um, companies because we are we are putting out an RFEI request for it expression of interest, we actually already put it out and received some responses to get some private funding for our 2024 construction season. Um, in doing so, we wanted to tell the CV fiber story. So this presentation is tailored toward those um, institutions. Um, however, it is very, very tailorable to other audiences and does a wonderful job of showing who we are as an organization. Thanks. So I'd like to walk you through the CV Fiber story. Um, we titled it Investing in the Future of Central Vermont, and this was dated in October the, because this was when we initially had sent it out. So I wanted to begin with one word. Usually this is a really difficult exercise in order to find one word that really encapsulates the spirit uh, of an organization, but the word tenacity was used by the de Deputy Director of the VCBB, Robert Fish, uh, when he was asked at our ribbon cutting ceremony at, in Calais uh, on why they were excited to partner with CB Fiber. And when you look at the definition of tenacity, there are a couple of other synonyms that come up. Uh, determination, strength, courage, spirit, and grit. And that, only, that not only describes us as an organization, but also those who we are serving, our partners, our ethics, um, our brand temple as well. And this is why we decided to start this presentation with this one word. I wanted to introduce you to Evelyn. Uh, we heard about Evelyn actually from one of our friendlies. She is a resident of Middlesex. Um, just a quote here, high level in terms of her story. Uh, she has a goal of completing her graduate courses and she knew it wouldn't be possible with slow DSL at home. Since the Middlesex Town Hall offers free Wi-Fi access for guests, she drove to the parking lot in the evenings to complete her courses. Uh, High-speed internet was such a critical, um, critical reason why she was able to advance her career. So this is the level of determination, strength, courage, spirit, and grit that we're hearing about from Central Vermonters. And it also exemplifies the growing need for broadband access across our community anchor institutions, which is a term that the VCBB is actually using actively and, and focusing on. So providing high-speed internet access to public facilities such as schools, libraries, health clinics, health centers, um, and medical providers. So in central Vermont, the least traveled roads have little to no access to high-speed internet. High-speed broadband connectivity should be universally accessible irrespective of location. This is the this is the stance and the point of view that we have as an organization um, that really, irrespective of where you are in central Vermont, you should have access to high-speed broadband. So we're part of a statewide initiative. We're a nonprofit municipality with 20 community members. We are governed by community delegates. We're constructing 1,300 miles of fiber to home network with a $20 million initial grant funding and $65 million estimated total required for completion. Our first priority, the unserved and underserved communities in central Vermont. A couple of data highlights. Um, we actually pulled data together and 
did an average for the 16 underserved communities in our district. And we really find that this, this uh, information helps paint a picture in terms of some of the demographics for the households and the businesses that we're looking to reach. So we're meeting a critical need. We're bringing high speed fiber internet to central Vermont. As a locally managed internet service provider and ISP, we're offering flexible packages, 24 seven customer support, symmetrical speeds, and one free Wi-Fi router. We are governed by guidance. Um, we are more interested in our stakeholders and not our shareholders. Uh, through our executive committee and our governing board, uh, we've had a couple of folks here that have uh, served for over the past five years with a long, a long-term commitment. So the initial funding has primed us really for success. Over the past five years, more than $20 million has been contributed to the development of the CB Fiber Network. You'll see here on the right, we've included a pie chart for some of the uh, allocations of funds in 2023 for our investments for the year. We've hired a full-time professional team. We have an executive director, an operations manager, and a community relations manager. And they are working on the day-to-day -day operations in order to uh, ensure that all communications and needs are being met uh, from a full-time operational staff. In terms of the structure, uh, we have a tailored scalable uh, planning, uh, a full process to address one fiber at a time. So we start with poll inventory with auditing, all the poles, their locations, and how they interconnect. Network design, where we're designing how the fiber is routed throughout the network, where redundancies are, um, and doing a make ready, preparing the poles to install the fiber, the actual installation and construction of the fibers, uh, setting up the hubs, adding routing equipment, all the power, and then finally connecting, which is the most exciting time uh, where we're actually connecting the fiber from the poles to homes and businesses. And we wouldn't be where we are today without some of these key partnerships. So you'll see here uh, key partners that we continually meet with on the construction side, operations, engineering, and also grant funding. In terms of our offerings, uh, we do have residential and commercial. Uh, the majority of our offerings, as you've seen from some of the numbers for CL1, are uh, in fact for residential. And we're offering four different packages uh, with varying speeds, anywhere from $79 to $199 a month. Now, this slide is really interesting because uh, as Jerry had mentioned before, we've actually had an increased interest in the light speed 500 and 1000 plans. So we're seeing a higher average rate per user than initially expected. Now, these numbers are accurate as of October 22nd. Uh, we will be monitoring them moving forward as we move into to other DAs. Uh, but these are some of the initial data points um, that we wanted to highlight. So where do we go from here? In 2024, which is phase two of construction, we have a strategic and robust plan to continue construction. This builds upon the work that has already been completed in years prior. So what does that consist of? Woodbury, Cabot, Callis, and Marshfield with the construction of 215 miles of fiber, providing access to over 2000 premises uh, in those uh, four communities, and further building out in Middlesex and Moortown with the construction of six, 60 miles of fiber, providing access to just over 570 premises in those two towns. For phase two, uh, we've already made a couple of substantial investments with the uh, with make ready, pull licenses, pre-purchased materials, all of the design work, and the town installation contributions. A couple of bucket items for 2024 forecasted and spend for pre-construction, construction labor, materials, project and construction management, installations, operations, and we've added a contingency uh, budget as well. In 2025, uh, which is actually phase three, uh, with an estimated $12 million in B grants matched with a $4 million in construction funding, the completion and construction in phase two will actually help extend the CV Piper backbone to access premises in Plainfield, East Montpelier, Barrytown, Orange, and Duxbury with total passings in excess of 2,200 uh, premises. 
and we have a three year plan. So within three years, um, we have annual goals and milestones to reach, but that at the end of three years, we're looking to complete a total of 700 miles, 6,900 passings, and hopefully uh, 3,225 subscribers on board. So how do we get there? How do we get big? Uh, we're looking hopefully um, to help with funding about seven and a half million dollars to help with some of the costs associated uh, with 2024. And then a $4 million, uh, $4 million is a 25% match for uh, $12 million in B grants for 2025-2026. Fantastic, Olivia. Thank you. Uh, any any comments on Olivia's presentation? Any any discussion following that? It's quite comprehensive. I don't hear anyone. I see some hands clapping. Thanks, Henry. Uh, I do. I do want to stop for a moment and ask a question. Is there anybody here from the public who wishes to make a comment on the CB Fiber 2024 budget? We still have the public hearing open if there's anyone who would like to make a comment. Jeremy, nobody new has joined us? Not okay, thank noticed. you. All right, just uh, want to make sure I check that box. Janiel, I'll hand it back to you to to uh, to round out the uh, updates and outlook. Sure. So we heard um, construction and materials and warehousing operations and marketing as well. Um, I believe this brings us to uh, or this wraps up those items. Unless anyone has any questions about any of those items that were presented by Olivia, Lucas, and myself. So I guess that wraps uh -huh. up that section. Well, I was going to say I'll 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 just make one more comment. A, even though perhaps it's uh, something that is taken for granted, it's it's worth saying that we anticipate continuing construction throughout the winter to the extent that it is viable and safe and and reasonable to do so, and we certainly will be continuing installations throughout the winter. So we're we're anticipating that our installations December through May will catch up to the construction that has been uh, accomplished in, in 2023. So there, there, there's always a lag. It, it, takes, it takes a while to do the installs, um, but we, uh, we have enough, plenty of construction mileage ahead of us to fill this winter with uh, installations. So we anticipate continuing with construction, especially in, in CLO3 throughout the winter. Um, and then we, we will also be doing installations on a daily basis, hopefully from now on, <laughs> on a daily basis. Uh -huh. Any questions or comments so far? I'm going to take a step back then in the in the uh, agenda. I do believe that Lori Beth is here with us. Am I correct? Lori Beth, are you here? No. Okay, okay. now I'm back. There <laughs> I had you to are. get the mouse. I had to get the mouse. I, I thought the you mic. were here. Thank you, Lori Beth. Would you? We. Uh, we we moved the treasurer's report in order to uh, uh, accommodate your uh, your showing up a little bit later than the than the time allotted. So, please, thank the floor you. is yours. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know if David went over the preliminary um, profit and loss and balance sheets that Ray had sent out or not, um, but Ray did send one out. I do not have the reconciled bank accounts yet, so I don't have any permanent one. But um, the balance sheet showed that we have uh, 6514000 and change um, in, the in the various bank accounts together. Um, and then 
in the construction area, one of the places he he uh, highlighted was the administration. We've got we spent forty five thousand and seventy two dollars, and in construction expenses, we did uh, five hundred eighty one dollars at six hundred and eighty six and ten cents, and then the operations um, we spent. Seventeen thousand seven hundred and eighteen dollars and fifty nine cents. Um, their design services and production um, that came to design services was one hundred and twenty six thousand three hundred and eighty six, um, and the total expenses were seven hundred and seventy seven thousand four hundred and sixty dollars and change. Um, he highlighted that Eustace had for the month of October had four, $494,672, we paid them. Gray Bar Electric, we paid $11,183. Um, KGP Logistics, we spent $69,157,157. Um, and then Mission Broadband, we spent $4,545. NRTC, we spent one hundred and twenty eight thousand five hundred ninety six dollars. Um, Selectronics Corporation, we spent twelve thousand five hundred sixty six and Vickery Hill, we spent one thousand nine hundred and um, ninety one dollars. And then there was a non specified area and that was all various ins and outs with the payroll like it has always been. Uh, there was nothing other into that pile this time. Um, and then he also put the expenses by vendor for the summary for the year um, from January 1st until November 2nd, we had spent $9,676,751.99. Thank you. Woo, go us. <laughs> yeah. Any 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 comments there? I'll 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 make one comment, and that is on the maybe two comments, but they're both about timing. On on one aspect, the the let's say October's numbers really don't get finalized by our accountant until the middle of November. So we're 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 uh, frequently out of sync with finalized numbers, and that's why that's why Lori Beth had mentioned preliminary, because e even though the the numbers typically don't change very much from one to the other, they're still not final until everything has been everything has been reconciled. So we're always a few days off. You know, if if our if our meetings were on the twenty fifth of the month. On the third Tuesday, let's say, instead of the second Tuesday, we would be able to give uh, reconciled final numbers. Um, but the, the reason that they're not is is purely the circumstance of the calendar. And as I had mentioned in previous meetings, uh, moving a meeting date is like moving heaven and earth. And I don't think we're going to give that a try Um Unless somebody wants to make a motion and and we put it to a vote, but having finding another meeting time, I think we'll just live with preliminaries and and backfilling with updated information if there are any substantial changes, which there typically aren't. No, that's that's the one comment. My other my other comment is please note that especially for the for our construction work the work happens in advance of the payments. So it's very likely that the work that is being done today, we won't get invoiced for until January. And now we're keeping track of this, of course, because we the funds are obligated and that's, that's, that's the key word. Uh, so they only obligate, get obligated to one place at a time. Um, but just to keep in mind that there is, there is a lag, and it, it's a natural lag. There is uh, there's there's nothing that, as far as reporting expenditures, we can do about that. Um, one of the things that's been brought up is changing some of the ways that we 
report information so that we're reporting not only expenditures, but we're also reporting obligated funds as well, which is probably more meaningful to have both and not just the expenditures. And that's something that we'll be working on for future, uh, for future presentations and through the Finance Committee. Um, any comment there? Jeremy, any new additions to our attendance list? Not that I've noticed. OK, thank you. Um, thank you, Lori Beth. I'll, I'll, I'll move on now to the. Uh, to our finance manager. Um, I forget sometimes we've talked about this a lot. Oh, Siobhan, go ahead. I see your hands up. Go ahead, please. It's just a quick procedural question. But I wondered. Never mind. I'm not going to ask it right now. Never mind. OK. Sorry. <laughs> this is not, this is not you great. made us all stop. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did. I'm sorry. OK. Uh, not a problem. So. On on talking about the finance manager in in. And I, I, if this has been said before to this group, I apologize for repeating myself. I know this has been said to the Finance Committee. It's been discussed in the Executive Committee, and I'm not sure to what extent we've discussed this here. But in, in envisioning the professionalism of CV Fiber and moving forward with staff, um, as, as we necessarily must do, we, we saw that there was a gap in our staffing. And although we do have an accountant that, that works for us and, and handles our books and does an excellent job of doing so, and even though we do have a, a finance committee, which is a, is a committee of volunteers, the from a staffing perspective, there really was, there was a hole there. We have, we have our treasurer, which is a volunteer position. What we don't have is a staff position that is managing CV Fiber's finances, really from all from all perspectives, and has that as a day to day job to manage manage our finances. And and by managing finances, that means keeping track of expenditures, keeping track of obligations, keeping keeping track of planning for the future, keeping track of the budget and building a budget, not only not only monitoring progress through the budget, but assisting in building the budget for 2025. Uh, so that that is a a staff level position that we don't have. And the Finance Committee has been working on this, and the Finance Committee has come up with a job description uh, for a finance manager um, that was also recommended then to the Executive Committee, and the Executive Committee approved that job description, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and also approved recommending creating a finance uh, manager position by the governing board, which is where we are tonight. I will also add that there is a line item in the budget, uh, a placeholder for a finance manager, even though the position hasn't been approved by the governing board yet. The idea was because of the timing and when the budget needed to be developed, that it would be a line item it would be a line item in the budget. Um, so before we even get to any, any motion on uh, the finance, man finance manager position, is there any additional discussion about this? And David Mannix, I'll, 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 uh, I'll reach out to you if there's anything that you would like to, to mention on this. Similarly, Janiel, if there's anything you'd like to uh, discuss about the finance manager before we move forward with the motion? You're on oh. mute, David. 
Yeah, Jerry said it well. It's it's a role that's needed uh, on a sustained basis, and it's been done primarily with volunteers, although we do have good resources in accounting, like Jerry said. We want to have that financial planning and analysis role as well and see this role growing as more work comes on uh, to, to be integrated in with everyone from operations to revenue cycle to construction, everything. So excited about this and I and, uh, hope we can move it forward. Excellent, thank you, David. Henry, your hand is up. Go ahead, sir. What What's the level of effort? Is this a full-time position or what? Well, we did some initial uh, sizing of work. We went through each position today, uh, Batchelder Associates time, how many hours of effort per month they're doing, uh, what uh, Lori Beth is doing in the treasurer function and what the gap is between what Ray's been doing and what Janiel does and everyone else. And we sized it at about a, about a quarter to a third of an FTE, our best guess. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we could see that growing over time as more grant requests come in, uh, other types of work come in, more forecasting, multi-year forecasting. But the initially, we think uh, we could start this as a full uh, part-time position, and that's what we have the job description crafted as. And David, that full-time equivalent, would you consider that something like 15 hours a week, thereabouts? 20, yeah, 20, I think, Janelle, you know, we landed on, I, I think it was about 20 is what's in the posting, yeah. Yeah, we said 15 to 20. I do think 20 is yeah. a bit more realistic and, you know, yeah. because there's a curve, a learning curve, yeah. Yeah. Henry, does that get to your question, sir? Yep, I, I thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm prepared to make a motion unless there is someone else that, that prefers to make a motion. I'll give others the opportunity. Okay, I don't hear anyone else. So let me let me go through just a, a short list of whereases. Whereas the finance committee approved the job description for a finance manager, Whereas the executive committee approved the job description, and whereas the executive committee recommended to the governing board the creation of the position of finance manager, I move that the governing board create the position of finance manager in accordance with the recommendation from the executive committee. Second. Seconded by Jeremy Matt. Thank you. Any ad additional discussion on this? I'm not hearing any additional discussion. Okay, then I suspect that we're ready for a vote. Are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you very much. We uh, are looking forward to rounding out our staffing. And uh, one, I guess one other thing that I could mention about this is that it's, uh, you know, we are, we are open to uh, a firm, you know, a contractor, a, con a consulting firm potentially taking on this role. It doesn't necessarily uh, have to be an individual, especially when it's a, uh, it's a part-time uh, position that it, it may make more sense for a firm to take on this role than than it may for a uh, for an individual. We may also end up sharing resources with other CUDs on this on this issue as well. This is something that that Janiel and Vicuda have been have been looking into. So thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. Um, Let's see, we have run through our agenda, but for the human resources discussion. So before we go there, it's 6.50. And if there is no public comment on the CV Fiber 2024 budget, I would like to close the public hearing now at 6.50 PM. Is there any comment that hasn't been heard? Is there any, any anyone out there? from the public that wants to make a comment on CV Fiber's 2024 budget. I did I'm just hearing see none. someone oh. pop in. I did see someone pop into chat. We now have 
21 people, but I'm having trouble picking up who. It looks like uh, there's a Josh. Josh. Okay. Okay, that's 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 Josh Diamond. He is here for the human resources discussion. Uh, unless he wants to make a comment on the CV Fiber 2024 budget. <laughs> okay. I appreciate the opportunity, but I'll sit this one out. All right, excellent. Thank you, sir. So with that, uh, we need. A well, I guess at this point, I am going to recuse and I am going to leave the meeting and leave it in the good hands of uh, Jeremy Matt to walk us through where we need to go next. I am also, let's see, I'm not exactly sure how to end my recording. I will end the recording now, and Jeremy, you can pick it up and then close it when it goes into executive session. Sounds good. Okay, excellent. So I will recuse myself now and I will stop the recording. Bear with me one second as I do that. I'll be recusing myself as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay, the recording is stopped at 6.52 and I am also leaving the meeting at 6.52. All right, let's see. One last one. I have a seven o'clock commitment, so this is probably a good time for me to drop as well. So thank you all. Bye. Okay, uh, let's see. I do not, unfortunately, know where the recording button is. Oh, there we go. Record. And I am not actually able to record. Is there anyone on here who is apparently signed? Apparently, I'm not signed in through my uh, CV Fiber account. So if someone wouldn't mind recording, that would be appreciated. Um, Jeremy Hansom might be able to. Yes, I can. Okay. Oh, actually, you. hold on. I'm logged on as my with my Norwich credentials here. If you if you want me to <laughs> if, if if you want me to record, I would have to log out, log back in. Um, otherwise, I I are are, are, are we required? Are are we required? I believe Jeremy, we I can, are I can as, start as, it. I've got I the believe we are as part of the um, the agreement that we're able to be fully remote. I think okay. that we need to record meetings. Josh, Josh, you you do but, but I I didn't think yes, we please. recorded. I didn't think we recorded executive sessions. We don't. We're not, but we're in, not in executive session. We need a motion, and then we'll go in. Gotcha. Uh, but Jerry handed the meeting over to me um, at this point. Thank you, David. All right, it's being so recorded, Jeremy. I see that we have restarted the recording, um, and we are now on the uh, human resources discussion item. Uh, this is an item that is um, covered by uh, oh, brain fart. I'm so tired right now. I apologize. Um, it's a sensitive HR matter, so we're going to go into exec or we're going to vote to go into executive session. Um, so I have a motion uh, move that we enter executive session to consider a sensitive HR matter that if held in public session would present a substantial disadvantage in accordance with 1 VSA section 313A1. And further that the CV Fiber Executive Director and Legal Counsel are invited into the executive session as they have information that is needed in accordance with 1 VSA Section 113B. I'll second that. I'll second that. Who seconded? That was me, Jeremy Hansen. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, any discussion on this? Uh, hearing none, uh, are any opposed to the motion? Uh, hearing no uh, abstentions. Uh, oh. oh, sorry, that was an echo. I was hearing myself. Um, I think I'm hearing some echo from Josh. Um, so hearing no objections, uh, motion passes. We are now in executive session. Um, I would ask uh, David Mannix to please stop the recording. Um, I would say that um, that alternates would be included. Do you think that's appropriate, Janelle? Uh, I but do. that uh, or that uh, staff not listed 
specifically in the in the motion leave the meeting please.